Now, in this tutorial, we're going to take a look at two tricky dilution calculations. These questions were asked by one of our subscribers, and actually, the language that the subscriber uses can you help solve these difficult questions? Now, these questions are potentially tricky, so I can understand why they may be difficult, but we want to go ahead and solve them because it has some subtle differences in terms of the kind of dilution calculation that we've already done. And I think by solving these questions, it will be of tremendous benefit to the entire community. Hello, this is Dr. Dankwa, and if this is your first time here and you like to learn pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks, and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. So let's get right to it. The first question says, calculate the amount of sodium nitrite required to prepare one liter of a concentrated solution such that diluting 1 to 20 will yield 0.1% weight by volume nitrite ion. Molecular weight of sodium nitrite is 69 and the atomic weight of sodium is 23. So let's start off with a quick schematic and that will give us a fiscal picture of what's actually going on in the question. So the goal here is to prepare a one liter solution and this solution is concentrated. So this is our one liter solution and we need to determine the amount of sodium nitrite that you need to prepare this concentrated solution. But we're going to take this entire one liter volume and we're going to dilute it down. So we will have a much larger solution after we've diluted it. And that solution should have a concentration of 0.1% weight by volume. So what we want to do now is actually determine, first of all, what the volume of the diluted solution is going to be. And then after we've done that, we will determine how much nitrite ion is actually present in the diluted solution. And then I'll show you exactly how you proceed from there because that's when it gets a little bit tricky. We have not actually done some of these examples on the channel. So let's go ahead and do the first thing that needs to be done. That's the volume of the solution. And we make use of the ratio strain that has been given. We are diluting in a 1 is to 20 ratio. So... 1 is to 20 implies that you have 1 milliliter in 20 milliliters. And what we have is a 1 liter solution. So if you convert the 1 liter to milliliters, the conversion factor states that 1 liter is 1,000 milliliters. And so that would imply that if we now have 1,000 milliliters, then what would be the actual volume that you get out of that? So we saw for X, which is our unknown, X is going to be equal to 20 milliliters times 1,000 milliliters divided by 1 milliliter. And that is equal to 20,000 milliliters. So the volume is actually 20,000 milliliters. So now that we've determined the volume, the goal is to figure out how much nitrite ion is actually present in the 20,000 milliliter solution. And that's important because all of that nitrite ion is going to come from the one liter concentrated solution. So we're kind of like working backwards, but we need to first know how much nitrate ion is actually present in the diluted solution and to do that we're going to utilize the concentration that has been given which is 0.1 percent weight by volume and then what 0.1 percent implies is that you have 0.1 gram in 100 milliliters so 0.1 percent implies you have 0.1 grams of nitrate ion in every 100 ml preparation but we do know we have 20,000 milliliter volume. So the goal here is to figure out how many grams is in the 20,000 milliliters. So we can go ahead and solve for Y, which is the unknown. So Y equals 0 0.1 gram times 20,000 milliliters divided by 100 milliliters. And that is equal to 20 grams. Now, the 20 grams represents the amount of nitrate ion in the 20,000 milliliter solution. And that is different from the amount of sodium nitrite. So this is where the question is very different from some of the examples that we've seen previously or that you would routinely see. Because typically, what will be the case is that 20 grams will be the amount of the salt, the sodium nitrite, and then that is essentially the amount that you need. But because the 20 grams refers to the amount of the nitrite ion, we need to use a different approach and I'm going to show you how to do that. So now that we know the amount of the nitrite ion, the next thing we need to do is actually make use of our understanding of the stoichiometry. So if we start off with the sodium nitrite, what typically happens is when you put this in an aqueous environment, it dissociates to the sodium cation, 
and the nitrite anion. And so from here, from the stoichiometry, one mole of sodium nitrite gives one mole of sodium cation and then one mole of the nitrite anion. And so the strategy would be to determine what the moles of the nitrite is based on the way that we calculated and then use the molar ratio between the sodium nitrite and the nitrite ion to determine what the moles of the sodium nitrite would be and then we'll convert that from moles to grams. So let's see how that works. So moles, also given as N, is equal to the mass over the molecular weight. And so now we want to find the moles of the nitrite. So we're going to take the 20 grams, which is the mass, divided by the molecular weight of the nitrite. Now we'll be given some useful information in the question. We know the molecular weight of the sodium nitrite to be 69. And we know the atomic weight of the sodium to be 23. So if we wanted to find the molecular weight of the nitrite, we could do that from first principle, or we could simply subtract the 23 from the 69, and that should give us 46. And so what will go in the denominator is 46 gram per mole. So 20 grams divided by 46 gram per mole is equal to 0 0.435 moles. So we can now go ahead and determine the moles of the sodium nitrite now, because the molar ratio is 1 is to 1, that's 1 mole of sodium nitrite gives you 1 mole of nitrite ion, that it implies that the moles of sodium nitrite is also going to be 0 0.435 mole. So we can now go ahead and find the mass using the equation. Mass is equal to moles times molecular weight. The moles is 0 0.435 and the molecular weight is 69 gram per mole so the mole cancels out and you end up with 30 grams let's take a look at another question this question says how much sodium fluoride with molecular weight 42 and fluoride ion with atomic weight 19 is required to prepare 200 milliliters of a solution such that 30 milliliters of this solution diluted to one liter of drinking water will provide the final concentration of fluoride ions of one part per million. Note that drinking water already contains 0 0.5 ppm of fluoride ion. Assume sodium fluoride available is 100% pure. So let's analyze the question. The first thing we need to understand is the solution that we are making actually is composed of drinking water and the drinking water already has 0 0.5 ppm of fluoride ion. So we need to make an assumption. We need to make an assumption that the 30 milliliters that we are preparing is actually made up of maybe sterile water for injection. So that really doesn't comprise the drinking water. So the actual volume in the one liter, which is made up of drinking water, is 970 milliliters. That is 1000 ml minus 30. That's an important assumption that needs to be made. Now, if it did say that your 30 ml is also composed of drinking water, then that's a slightly different situation. The only thing that will be different is that instead of now having 970 ml of drinking water containing the 0 0.5 ppm, you now have a thousand milliliters. But let's see how that looks like as we go through the solution. It's important that we start out with the schematic. What is actually happening is you made a solution and the concentrated solution is 200 milliliters and from this 200 milliliter solution you take out 30 ml and you prepare another solution which is 1000 milliliters or one liter and the final concentration in here is one part per million so now the first thing that we need to do is to determine the amount of fluoride ion that is present in the thousand ml preparation and so the way we do that is to make use of the concentration. It says one part per million or one ppm. And what that implies is that you have one gram of fluoride ion in a million milliliters. Now, since we have a one liter solution, we want to determine how many grams will be in 1000 milliliters because one liter is a thousand milliliters. We can go ahead and solve for our unknown, which is X. So X is going to be equal to one gram times a thousand milliliters divided by one million milliliters then milliliters cancel out some of the zeros cancel out and you essentially end up with 
0.001 gram now just for convenience we want to convert the grams to milligrams so we'll take the 0.001 gram and use the conversion factor that one gram is equal to a thousand milligrams so the grams cancel out and you end up with one milligram so now it's important to know that this one milligram represents the amount of fluoride ion in the thousand ml solution but notice that the drinking water itself has some fluoride in it and that is at a concentration of 0.5 ppm. So we need to do a quick accounting. We need to determine how much fluoride was already present in the drinking water and how much needed to be added from the solution that was taken from the 30 ml solution that was taken from the 200 ml solution. So what that would look like then is we'll take the 0.5 ppm, which is basically 0.5 grams in a million milliliters and determine how many grams will be present in the 970 milliliter solution. Now, once again, this 970 milliliters is coming from the difference between the one liter solution of the 1000 ml preparation that we are making and the 30 ml that we added because the 970 ml will be the actual drinking water that was used to dilute the concentrated solution that we took out. So that's an assumption that we made at the beginning that all of the drinking water would contain the fluoride, but then our solution itself is repaired using maybe sterile water for injection. So we can go ahead and solve for the unknown here. So X is going to be equal to 0.5 grams times 970 milliliters divided by 1 million milliliters. And that's going to be equal to 0.000485 grams. Now we can convert this to milligrams and one gram is equivalent to a thousand milligrams. So the grams cancel out and you end up with 0.485 milligrams. So the actual fluoride that was added is going to be the difference between the one milligram and the 0.485 milligrams, which is equal to 0.515 milligrams of fluoride. So this 0.515 milligrams is actually the amount of fluoride that is present in the 30 ml preparation. But we need to find out how much fluoride ion is present in the 200 milliliter solution because that's the amount that we actually want to make. So we would go ahead and say that 0.515 milligrams is present in 30 milliliters. So how many milligrams is present in the 200 milliliter solution? So we can go ahead and solve for the unknown, which is y. So y equals 0.515 milligrams times 200 milliliters divided by 30 milliliters. And that is equal to 3.43 milligrams. So we now need to convert the milligrams to moles. And that will give us the moles of the fluoride ion. And so we'll take the 3.43 milligrams. We convert that to grams. So a thousand milligrams gives us one gram and this gives us 3.43 times 10 to the negative three grams. So we can now determine the moles. Now moles equals mass over molecular weight. So that would imply that we have the 3.43 times 10 to the negative three grams. And we divide that by the atomic weight of fluoride, which is 19. And that is equal to 1.81 times 10 to the negative 4 moles. Now, when you have sodium fluoride and you put that in an aqueous environment, you have a sodium cation and a fluoride anion result after dissociation. And the moles of the sodium fluoride to the moles of the fluoride ion is a one-to-one -one ratio. Basically, what that means is one mole of sodium fluoride gives you one mole of sodium cation and one mole of the fluoride ion. So we can make use of that information and now determine the actual amount of the sodium fluoride that is needed. So the mass of the sodium fluoride is going to be equal to the moles of the sodium fluoride times the molecular weight, which is going to be equal to 1.81 times 10 to the negative 4 mole times the molecular weight, which is 42 gram per mole. So that is equal to 7.6 times 10 to the negative 3 grams or we can convert this to milligrams by using the conversion factor one gram is a thousand milligrams the grams cancel out and that is equal to 7.6 milligrams 
So essentially what that means is we need to take 7.6 milligrams of sodium fluoride and use that to prepare the 200 milliliter stock solution. And then once we've done that, if we do take 30 milliliters and dilute it to a liter, we would end up with one parts per million. So I hope you found this video tutorial useful. If you did, be sure to like it and share it. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and I'll get to them as soon as I see them. If you'd like to learn more pharmaceutical calculations, tips, tricks, and strategies, then start by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.